In this video, we're going to see how to clone an existing project in Git, GitHub, or any similar tool into Android Studio, and we're also going to see how to set up Git with Android Studio for the very first time. So to begin with, I have a project here in GitHub, and I'm simply going to go to Clone or Download and then choose this copy link here. Now I've already installed Android Studio, so I'm going to choose File, New, and then Project from Version Control, and then Git. I'm going to paste, and I'm going to choose Test. Now we notice there's an error, and that's because I have not yet installed Git on this computer. If you already have, and you've already configured your Android Studio, feel free to skip this part, but if not, let's follow along. Git is something that is integrated with Android Studio, but is also a standalone program. And we have to download and install that standalone program before we can integrate with Android Studio. So to get the standalone program, we go to gitscm.com. Now I happen to be on a Windows machine, so I'm going to choose this download link here. We'll let the download get started. And once it's finished, simply choose open and we follow the prompts from here. Of course, read the entire license agreement and choose next. You may have noticed I told it to start git bash. Reason for that is I can simply go to this command line, type in git, and if I see some help text here, it verifies that git was installed correctly. Now the other thing that it did when I installed it is it added a path variable to my environment variables here. And that's really all that Android Studio needs to know to know how to access git. So I paused the video for just a moment and I restarted Android Studio. I put in the same GitHub URL that we saw earlier. Now I'm going to choose test and you notice this time, instead of an error, it says connection successful. So I'm going to go ahead and choose clone. It's cloned the source and now if you take a look, you'll see that it's Gradle syncing. And as part of that process, it will realize it is an Android project. We'll see a little reconfiguration on the left navigation here in just a moment. Sure enough, you notice we now have an Android option at the top, and if we expand this, we can see an Android structure that we're used to with our unit tests, our instrumented tests, and then the work that we want to do here. It looks like our build is successful. So from here, it's quite straightforward. When we have changes we want to make, we simply right-click, choose Git, and then we can choose Commit Directory like so. If we want to pull or push changes, we can do them from here as well. If we have multiple remotes, we can manage them at the Remotes tab. That's where you'll spend a lot of your time working with Git. I'll tell you one other thing that's really handy is this Version Control tab here. Local changes help us to understand any changes that we made that are local to our system. So if I had a simple comment, you see that the notification receiver shows up down here in default change list. So you see what I have that's on my computer that's different than what's on the remote. Let's take a look at log. This is where things get really interesting. With log, you can look at the different branches and merges that have happened over time on the Git repository. And it looks kind of like a subway map. It also looks similar to the network graph that we'll see in GitHub when we go to insights and then we go to network and you can see a history of the different branches that have occurred over time in this project. You see, as I put this specific project together, I did quite a few different things in feature branches, and then I merged them in. As a matter of fact, you can take a look at the branches here, and you can see which ones were merged. So essentially, each learning nugget was its own feature branch that eventually got merged. Maps and notification, room and live data, recycler view, and superclass fragment. So if we go back here, we'll see some very familiar looking terms, maps and notification, room and live data, recycler view, and superclass fragment. So you can see each of these, you can see their history in our version control. Now the handy thing is, let's say that you wanna go back in time a little bit and you wanna debug something that I did several commits ago. That's easy. You simply right click here and you can say, check out revision 5F697271. Let's go back and take a look at our commit history. And sure enough, you see here, here is a commit on April 11th of 2020, 5F69727. And that's going back a few commits from the most recent commit that I have here. 
But sure enough, if I go back here and I say check out revision like so, that let me, lets me go back to that point in time. Now one note, you tend to go back in time. When you do that, you tend to do it in a read-only fashion. You don't tend to make new changes because there have been commits that have happened since then. But nonetheless, if you just want to go back and see how things were before something new was introduced or maybe before a pull request was merged, that's a really good way to do it. And of course, you can go through and use the debugger and walk through the code at your own pace, which to me is the best way to learn somebody's program. So I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.